and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to go through each of the properties of rational exponents and do some problems. So this is a supplement to the lesson uh, on applying properties of rational exponents. We're going to go through each of the properties in a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's talk about the different properties. First is, and I'm going to go through these quickly and then I'm going to go through them in a little bit more detail. First one is product of the powers. So in product of the powers, I have the same base but a different exponent. Um, and I'm multiplying the two bases together with the exponent. In that case, as an example, uh, when I multiply those two bases together, I'm going to end up adding the exponents. So if I have 8 to the third times 8 squared, then that leaves me with 8. I keep the base the same, and then I add the exponents. Uh, 3 plus 2 is going to be equal to 5. And that makes sense, right? If I have 8 times 8, times 8, which is 8 to the third, times 8 times 8, which is 8 squared, I end up multiplying 8 five times by itself. Okay, so 8 to the third times 8 squared gives me 8 to the fifth, and that's a product of the powers property. Okay, next is power of a power property, and in that case, I have some value a to the m, and I'm raising that all to the n value. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the exponents together and keep the base the same. So in this example, I give you 4 squared, and I'm taking that to uh, the second power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both powers together, power of a power, and I end up with 4 to the fourth. Okay, power of a product. Here I have a product AB. It might be some values, just one value. I could say 81 which is a product of 9 and 9. And that tells me that what I can do is I can separate A and B out, so the factors of the product AB, and I can apply the exponent to both of those uh, factors of a given product. So if I had 6 squared, that's the same as 3 squared times 2 squared. So my product is 6. I can separate uh, 6 out into two factors, 3 and 2, and then I would apply the exponent to both of those factors. So in this case, again, I have a product. I separate the factors, a product in parentheses raised entirely to a power. I separate and then remove the parentheses, separate out the factors, and apply the exponent to each of those given factors. All right, so 6 squared becomes 3 squared times 2 squared. All right, negative exponent. This is the one that most students tend to forget because they see the negative value and they're not really sure what to do or they think that they should make the value a negative value. But that's not really the case. All we're saying is the negative stands for take the reciprocal of the value of a to the n power. So if I have a to the negative n, that's the same as 1 over a to the n. If I have 1 over a to the negative n, that leaves me with a to the n. So in this case, I give you an example, 2 to the negative 2, and that's the same as 1 over 2 squared, or 1 over 4. Zero exponent property we won't go over today in any detail, but I'll just say anything to the 0 is going to be equal to 1. So a to the 0 is equal to 1, 5 to the 0 is equal to 1, 6 to the 0 is equal to 1, so on and so forth. All right, now quotient of the powers. So if I am dividing two values that have the same base, so a and a, but different exponents, then I can just simply subtract the exponents and keep the base the same. So in this example, I have 6 to the 6th divided by 6 to the 4th, and that leaves me with 6 squared. So I just subtract 4 from 6 to get 6 squared. And the power of the quotient, I have some quotient a divided by b, I'm taking it all to the y, and I can separate um, out the numerator and denominator and apply the uh, power of y to each numerator, the, the value of the numerator and the value of the denominator. So in this case, <clears throat> I have a to the y, b to the y. If I had uh, something like 9 over 4 uh, squared, that's going to be the same as 9 squared over 4 squared, or 81 over 16.
Okay, so those are just the basics of the properties. Let's go through the properties in detail, and then we'll do a couple problems. All right, the first one, product of the powers. So I said same base, different exponent. All I'm doing is I'm keeping the base the same and adding the exponent values. So if I have a to the one-third times a to the three-fourths, uh, at this point, I'm just going to keep the base the same and then add the exponents. Now I have fractions, so I have to change the fractions uh, so that they both have a common denominator in order for me to add them. So in this case, one-third becomes four-twelfths, three-fourths becomes nine-twelfths. I add four to nine, and I end up with eight to the thirteen-twelfths. In the second example, I have seven to the one-half times seven to the three-halves. I add one-half and three-half together to get four-halves. Four-halves is the same as two. Seven squared is the same as 49. Okay, so let's move on to some practice problems. The first is 6 to the 1 half times 6 to the 6 fourths, right? So in this case, I'm going to add, I have the same base, I have a different uh, exponent, I'm going to add the exponent together and end up with 6 <coughs> to the 2 fourths, so I need a common denominator, times 6 to the 6 fourths, so I'm adding 6 fourths, and that gives me 6 to the 8 fourths, or 6 squared, which is equal to 36. In the next example, I have 4 to the 5 halves plus, I'm sorry, times 4 to the 1 half. That's the same as 4 to the 5 halves plus 1 half. That gives me 4 to the 6 halves, or 4 cubed, which is equal to 64. Next problem, 9 to the 1 third times 9 to the 1 sixth. That gives me 9 to the 2 sixth times 9 to the 1 sixth, uh, or 9 to the 2 sixths plus 1 sixth, which leaves me with 9 to the 3 sixths, or 9 to the half. 9 to the half is the same as the square root of 9, which is going to be equal to 3. Okay, moving on. We have a power of a power. Power of a power. I have a to the m. I'm taking that all to the m, n, excuse me. And in that case, a stays the same, and now I'm just multiplying m times n. So in this case, I have 3 to the 1 third. Uh, I'm taking that all to the 2 thirds. And what I do is I multiply 1 third times 2 thirds. That gives me 2 ninths. 5 to the 1 fourth, taken to the 1 half. 5 to the 1 fourth times 1 half is 5 to the 1 eighth. Last problem, 6 to the 3 halves, taken to the 2 thirds. 3 halves times 2 thirds is equal to uh, 6 to the 6 sixths. 6 to the 6 over 6 is equal to 6 to the 1, which is just equal to 6. All right, let's do a couple problems. I have 3 to the 3 halves squared, which is the same as 2 over 1. That leaves me with 3 to the 6 over 2, which is the same as 3 to the 3rd, which is equal to 27. So 6 to the 6 halves, 6 over 2 is equal to 3, 3 to the 3rd is equal to 27. All right, now I'm, gonna, I'm going to include some other properties that we've already used. I have 4 to the 1 3rd times 4 to the 1 3rd. That leaves me with 4 to the 2 3rd. So right, I'm adding the, I keep the base the same, I add the exponents when I multiply these two values together, as long as the base is the same. And then I'm going to take that all to the 3 fourths, and that leaves me with 4 to the 6 twelfths, which is the same as 4 to the 1 half. 6 over 12 is equal to 1 half. And 4 to the 1 half is the same as the square root of 4, and that leaves me with 2. 16 to the 1 fourth, I take that to the second power. That gives me 16 to the 2 fourths, so I multiply 2 over 1 times 1 over 4. 2 over 4 is the same as 1 half. 16 to the 1 half is the same as the square root of 16, and that is equal to 4. Okay, moving on. Next property power of a product. Again, I have a product here, a times b, the two factors of the product. I can remove the parentheses and apply the exponent to each of the factors, a to the m, b to the m. So here I have 144 to the 1 half, that's the same as 16 times 9 to the 1 half. That's the same as 16 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half. 16 to the 1 half is 4, 9 to the 1 half is 3, 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So we're going to use this when we're multiplying in a case where the base is different but the exponent is the same. So that means that if I'm presented 
with uh, this particular problem, I can go in the other direction to combine these two values uh, as a product and then take the combined product to just the single exponent to the one half. So when the bases are different but the exponent's the same, I'm multiplying these values. I can take the product of these two values to the same power or I can separate a value out into two separate factors and apply the same power to those two factors. Another example, two to the third times four to the third is the same as eight to the third, and eight to the third is the same as two to the third times four to the third. Okay, so let's do some problems. I have three to the one-fourth times 27 to the one-fourth. So in this case, I am going to use my power of a product I'm going to multiply 3 times 27 together, I get 81. I take that all to the 1 fourth. I figure out that 3 to the 4th is equal to 81, so this value is equal to 3. So in this case, what you want to do is you want to think about, uh, typically I take care of taking the roots of a, a given value first before I raise it to a given power. So I analyze the denominator first and then I analyze the numerator. So I say what value times itself 4 times can equal or is equal to 81 or a factor of 81. In this case, 3 to the 4th is equal to 81. So I know that 81 to the 1 4th is equal to 3. Next question, 5 to the 1 3rd times 25 to the 1 3rd gives me 125 to the 1 3rd. And I know that the value 5 cubed is equal to 125. So my answer in this case, 125 to the 1 3rd is going to be 5. So what value times itself three times is equal to 125? That value is 5. All right, next problem. I have 64 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half. Now, really, I don't need to multiply these two together, so it's a little bit of a tricky problem. I can just take care of these values in and of themselves and then multiply them together. So 64 to the 1 half is equal to 8. 9 to the 1 half is equal to 3. 20, uh, 8 times 3 is equal to 24. All right, that's power of a product. Negative exponent. All right, so I said that a to the negative 1 is equal to 1 over a to the 1. So all I'm doing is I'm taking the reciprocal of the value that's attached to the exponent. So in this case, I have a to the negative 2. That's the same as 1 over a squared. 2 to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over 2 squared, or 1 over 4. 1 over 2 to the negative 2 is going to be equal to the reciprocal of this value, 2 over 1 squared, which is equal to 4. All right, so let's take a look at a couple problems. I have uh, number 10, 1 over 3 to the negative third, which gives me 3 over 1 to the third, which is the same as 27 over 1. In this case, I have 3 to the 1 third times 5 to the 1 third. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to use the first property that we learned, which is product of the powers. Product of the power says I have the same base uh, different exponent or the same exponent, I'm going to add the bases together. I'm sorry, I'm going to add the exponents together. So I have 3 uh, to the 1 third times 3 to the 5 thirds gives me 3 to the 6 thirds, which is the same as 3 squared, which is the same as 9, and I'm taking that all to the negative 2. 9 is the same as 9 over 1. I take the reciprocal of that value and now I'm going to square it. This is the same as 1 over 9 squared, which is equal to 1 over 81. All right, next, uh, number 12, I'm going, to, I'm going to need to apply my properties um, or my um, order of operations in order to uh, solve this particular problem. I have parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So I see now that I'm going to have to take care of the first operation, which is taking one half to the negative third. I don't want to multiply five times one half because in the order of operations, that's not the first order, not the first operation that I want to take care of. So one half to the negative third gives me two over one to the third, which is equal to, let me get this black line out of the way, which is equal to eight. And then I'm going to multiply that value by 5, and I get 40, okay? I think I have two more properties for you. Next one is quotient of the powers. It says that if I have the same base uh, taken to some uh, exponent divided by the same base, 
taken to a given exponent, I'm now subtracting the exponent. So 3 to the 5 thirds uh, over 3 to the 2 thirds is the same as 3 to the 5 thirds minus 2 thirds. 3 to the 5 thirds minus 2 thirds is 3 to the th uh, 3 thirds, which is the same as 3 to the 1, which is equal to 3. Second problem, 4 to the 2 thirds over 4 to the negative 1 third. Again, same base. I'm going to subtract the exponents. In this case, I take the negative of a negative value. I take the negative of a negative value. And I have 2 thirds now plus 1 third. So 2 thirds minus minus 1 third gives me 2 thirds plus 1 thirds, or 4 to the 3 thirds. 4 to the 1 is equal to 4. So let's take a look at a couple problems. I have 84 to the 1 fourth over 80, I'm sorry, 81 to the 1 fourth over 81 to the negative 1 fourth. It's the same as 81 to the 1 fourth minus a minus 1 fourth, which is plus 1 fourth. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth gives me 1 half. 81 to the 1 half is equal to 9, the square root of 81. In this case, I have 4 to the negative 3 fourths minus a minus 5 fourths, which gives me plus 5 fourths. I end up with 4 to the 2 fourths, or 4 to the 1 half, which is equal to 2. 7 to the 5 fourths minus the 1 fourth gives me 7 to the 4 fourths, which is equal to 7 uh, to the 1, which is equal to 7. Okay? Last property, uh, power of a quotient. So I have a quotient, I'm taking that to a given power. So when I do that, I can separate out the numerator and denominator, <coughs> uh, the divisor and the dividend, and I can take each of those to the nth power, in this case, and I can go in either direction, this property works for either direction I have. Now, a over b to the n is the same as a to the n over b to the n. So in this case, I have 27 over 64 to the 1 third. I can separate that out into 27 to the 1 third over 64 to the 1 third, which gives me 3 over 4. 27 to the 1 third is 3, 64 to the 1 third is 4. Uh, and I have 27 to the 2 thirds over 64 to the 2 thirds. I can take 27 to the 2 thirds over 64 to the 2 thirds which is uh, 27, the cube root of 27 squared. So the cube root of 27 we already figured out was 3, squared is 9. The cube root of 64 squared is going to be 16. So 4 squared is 16. All right, so three more problems to do and then we're done. I have 81 uh, to the 1 fourth over 16 to the 1 fourth. That's the same as 81 to the 1 fourth over 16 to the 1 fourth. And you can see that it's going to be easier instead of dividing 16 into 81 and taking that to the 1 fourth when you don't have a calculator, to separate them out and then solve. 81 to the 1 fourth gives me 3. 3 to the fourth is 81. 16 to the 1 fourth is 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So here is my answer. Uh, number 17, 64 to the 1 third over 27 to the 1 third. I can separate that out into 64 to the 1 third over 27 to the 1 third using my power of a quotient property. That leaves me with uh, 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. So the cube root of 64 is 4. The cube root of 27 is 3. 4 over 3 is my answer. Last problem, 125 to the 1 third using the power of a quotient property. 8 to the 1 third cubed root of 125 is equal to 5. Cubed root of 8 uh, of 8 is going to be 2. So 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. 5 times 5 times 5 is equal to 125, and I'm left with an answer 5 and a half.